Big Brothers for Big Deals. Um, in my first life, which some of you heard before, I built a company similar to AMS to do helicopter diagnostics. And we were, we were knocking down the, the, the barriers. We were beating people and competing for technology demonstrations. And we got a little cocky and arrogant. And what we didn't realize is that not, nobody in aviation buys a big thing from a small company. Uh, why? Uh, because basically uh, a life of an aircraft is 40 years. So when an OEM designs a new airplane, basically they have all the parts have to be supported for 40 years at least. Okay, so companies have been around for three or four years and have uh, a balance sheet with a few million dollars on it aren't, aren't deemed capable. What we did wrong in my company is we waited too long to wake up to this until a major customer told us that basically they wanted what we had but they couldn't buy it from us. The end result was a forced uh, acquisition. The, the decision was to continue as a little company bumbling along doing research or or basically go for it. And ultimately, Goodrich bought our business and uh, they've delivered 4,000 systems to the U.S. military and uh, Sikorsky as an OEM and other customers. And, uh, but none of us, none of our shareholders, none of our employees uh, participate in the financial upside. So when I joined AMS, Bill and I had a, this discussion. It's always, it's always discouraging to hear that, that despite all the good things you're doing is basically uh, you're in the minor leagues when it comes to hitting the, hitting the home run. So uh, he accepted my uh, rationale and my, my war stories. And so we're, we've preempted another situation that I ran into by alignment with Sierra Nevada, alignment with L3, alignment with Megan. So we are now basically, we have, we have checked off the box at the OEMs and the major airlines in terms of being able to deliver and support a product for 40 or 50 years. Data streaming demo, we've kind of beat this to death, but this is a major development for us. Um, five years from now, we may look back and say this made the company, okay, because this is, this. certainly L3 came to us, uh, we're, uh, the, the relationship wasn't them just necessarily seeking us out, but they came to us basically because we had demonstrated data streaming. They saw us potentially encroaching on their black box business, and they had in, people in-house that had uh, it's, uh, been advocating for something like they were doing, but they didn't know how to do it. So they saw the opportunity to avoid being made irrelevant uh, by the technology and to, to lash up with a good company to make one and one equal much more than three. The fuel program, it's all about the money. Kent, uh, I, I prompted Kent to tell, ask you if anyone knows how much gas a WestJet 737 burns a year. Anybody have any idea what the fuel bill might be for a typical 737 with today's prices? One million. One million? <laughs> this is, this is going to be an auction. Okay. All right. I need a, I need a higher bid. Okay. How about seven to $8 million a year for a 737? And how about uh, $18 million a year for a 767? So when, when we're able to deliver these, uh, these little improvements in each aspect of the aircraft operation that add up to two or three or four percent of fuel savings, you can do the math. Okay. It's a big deal. Okay, so the addition of the fuel program uh, is uh, is a major factor in our in our future. Kent alluded to the fact that we're now at the table with the people recommending the future direction of certain technologies. The BEA is the French Accident Investigation Agency. He explained that. You see in our report and our uh, circular here that we're also we're invited onto a team that's doing something called. See if I can remember. Oceanic position tracking improvement. I always forget what the MI is. Anyway, you get the idea. The first three ones. The whole, the whole idea gets to my point of being able to know where an airplane is. So we are on a European consortium, and I'll show you the lineup uh, at the, on the last slide, that's basically going to make recommendations to the regulators as to how to, what technologies to employ to improve the ability of air traffic control to know where the airplanes are that they're trying to control. So uh, we, we uh, were lucky to get on the, the, uh, the group and we have the opportunity now to possibly do an actual demonstration using one of our customers' aircraft. 
if that happens and it's successful, and it will be, uh, we will basically be written up uh, probably generically uh, in the final recommendation to the single European skies entity and you know how long regulation takes, but basically those, these opportunities don't come up very long. So this is another reason why we're, we're on the radar screen now. Uh, the wing speed acquisition wasn't planned. Uh, it um, uh, wasn't ideally timed in terms of our financial resources, to put it mildly, uh, but uh, it be we decided that they had some good technology. As Bill mentioned, they had beat us in some, some uh, competitions, and they had some great customers. So uh, this was a significant factor, and people now who were thinking about buying wing speed in the past now come to us. So uh, that was good. So all these factors add up to the fact that, that we're credible as a company in this industry, and we're now becoming more familiar. And familiarity is a very uh, significant factor in how you're accepted in, in this uh, aviation community. So what can you look forward to in terms of our, uh, our press releases? <laughs> <laughs> Bill and Tom, if I uh, if I go offside here, you have to just you know come muzzle me. Um, okay, you've heard about Aircap. Uh, Aircap is a uh, large European-based um, leasing company, probably stands for Aerospace Capital, uh, and they own a lot of Airbus uh, airplanes, and the are the ones that are getting a little long in the tooth, basically don't have enough service life in passenger mode left to justify uh, refurbishing them, but they can be converted to cargo aircraft and all the amenities don't have to be redone. So they have a passenger to freighter program that Airbus is sponsoring. Aircap is their first customer and after a two and a half year mating dance, uh, we've basically been selected by Aircap to provide the, the uh, uh, tracking system and the Link 2000 plus compliance system. Now that, that it doesn't, we will essentially be working with Airbus uh, on this program, although it's a refurbishment program. But it doesn't require a lot of imagination to figure out that if we do a good job and build the relationships, that uh, there's another part of Airbus that uh, uh, will check our references internally, and, and this is a building block towards the, the big end game. Besides Aircap, which is a lesser, there's another major lesser who we can't name at this point.